Yes, we now have enough tools to go to base classification. I start with um, repeating or presenting the generic base formula. I will then present an illustrative example. And I will then show how base classification is done in complexer situations with many conditions and with not so many examples. Our setting is we are, as always, giving a set of feature vectors. We are giving a set of K classes. Yes. C1 into CK. We want to know how to get from a feature vector onto a class. And this knowledge is somewhere hidden in our data set. And you have learned a lot of approaches to cope with this. For instance, candidate elimination, decision trees, linear regression, location regression, logistic regression, neural networks, and now you learn base. And we present you always the setting that you learn from machine learning. We start always the same. And you, as a machine learning expert, have to choose the tool which you use to build this function. And today, we will approximate this function, which is implicitly given by ID, with the joint probabilities which are hidden in D. We will need base theorem in this regard. And um, I would like you to spend a minute or let's say 20 seconds to read by yourself and then I will discuss this. It looks a bit complicated, but in fact, it is not. Um, we have a probability space. We have partitioned the probability space into K mutually exclusive events. And we can express now the conditioned event A under B. I've written here AI, but it's a single A. I've uh, already, I'm already using an index here for later purposes. We can express AI under B as the conditional probability of B under AI times the prior of AI and uh, something in the denominator, uh, denominator, which comes from the rule of total probability, which is P from B, not more. We call the probabilities of the AI the priors. And we call the result on the left-hand side the posterior probability of AI. This formula does an interesting job. If we will now talk about cause and effect, let's say AI is a cause. For instance, a disease or a class or something that leads to certain symptoms. Then what base does, it reverses the connection, symptoms under disease or text specifics under spam or ham, we come to a reverse connection, which we can uh, interpret as follows. How probable is it if that we have spam or a certain disease if we observe symptoms? That means from the cause effect, we get to does the symptom lead to a certain hint whether a certain class happens. We learn 
Or we can ask ourselves, if you observe certain symptoms or properties, how likely or how probable is it that AI is the reason for this? That means we can reason about what has happened. We use this, and these are called likelihoods. We use these likelihoods, which we can easily observe, to reason about what could have happened. Again, you recognize this since the roles of cause and effect are reversed. This is what Bayes always brings to us. It looks simple, but it isn't. The famous Uriah Pearl Turing Award winner of 2014, one of the biggest computer scientists from our time has written a book only about this formula. To prove that it's correct, this formula is not difficult. You saw this already. We have the conditional probability. I showed you this here. And from the identity which I presented you half an hour ago, you can directly see this here. And if you apply, sorry, I go back now. If you apply in the denominator, the theorem of total probability, then you have base rules. That's all. I present you now a reasoning example. This is from Kirchgesner from his script 2009. And it demonstrates the power of this approach. We have several events, the event A1 that a certain person might have AIDS. And we have, we are giving a screening test. And uh, the event B means that the test is positive. And from clinical trials, we know that B under A1, that means B under A1, AIDS, test positive under AIDS is 98%. That means as a high specific, um, sensitivity with this. And um, that B under A2, test positive under no AIDS is 3%. This is a good specificity. Yeah, it's, it's quite acceptable. We know about the population that about 0.1% that means 0 0.001 is already infected. From this, we can derive that 0 0.999 is not infected, as this directly follows from the probabilities of the probability measure. And you see, I already used the colors here to make it easier for you to read. The cause, AIDS, leads to a symptom, namely test outcome. This information here, the prior knowledge, can be measured by asking people or applying tests or looking in the population. And this information do we get from clinical tests. We now ask ourselves, if you get the test applied to yourself and it's positive, what is the probability that you, in fact, have AIDS? That means we are looking for the probability of AIDS under test positive. And we can use base rule, base rule to, um, to infer this. The probability that a test is positive 
can be derived is a formula of the total probability. You know the priors for A1 and A2, and you have the conditional events probabilities here. And this information, you can plug this into the base formula and compute. And now you see the words from cause and effect. What is probability that you have AIDS if you get a positive test? And plugging these values in says it's only 3%. Although this test has a very high sensitivity. This is a consequence of the extreme priors, the extreme imbalance. And to make this a bit more clearer, I show you the tree diagram of the proportions. A sample size of 100,000 people, from prior knowledge, we know 100 are infected, 99,900 not. Have a good test. But this test, although it's quite specific, leads to these number of false positives. And this proportion from all positive is 3%. This is how we work with base rules. We know we have a situation where we get knowledge here, so-called likelihoods, which we can observe without risk over years in hospitals, in documents, in many places. We have information about priors, but this is the most crucial thing. And then we can reason in a detective manner, like Sherlock Holmes. If a person shows certain symptoms, what could have been happened? This is, in that sense, a simple example, because we have only two classes here and one condition experiment um, event here. And we have to extend this to combined conditional events here. And this is what we do now. From its mechanics, nothing complicated happens. We take exactly these base rules, but now we consider the occurrence of a combined event. And this combined event will be in the role of the features. Hence, I've already indexed them with 1 to p. And if we apply this to all classification problems, the AI means events A index I correspond to our K classes. And the BJ means the B index J correspond to the events attribute dimension J has a certain value. In a regular situation, we observe, for instance, we are giving spam mails and somebody has labeled them to us, certain events, distributions about symptoms. In a reverse connection, which is given via base in a diagnosis situation, we can infer this. That's all. This is the idea and the principle of base. One problem is there. We can apply this rule only if you have efficient data to get reliable estimates for our probabilities. And in fact, if you plug in this into the base formula, you see this term here. A certain event, let's say spam mail, leads to a combination of certain word properties. And this combined event here is a very complex event. It asks for B1 and B2 and B3 and so on, and BP is happened. 
It is a very specific event. And the more possibilities you have in each dimension here, the larger the number of these combined events becomes. Actually, this number of these events grows exponentially. And I can directly say, no, we will never have sufficient data to do this. It means this nice idea of base does not work in this way. It worked here because we had only one condition event. For this, we get data enough. But if you think about our p dimensions here, it's becoming difficult. What I've told you now is all described here in the remarks, and I can skip over this. But um, only to, to say you, yes, here, what here is, here I discussed this that we, that we reverse um, the, the direction of inference, and um, we have a, a standard situation here regularly observed, and we have a reversed connection, and we can connect them. By the way, I also want to mention this. Although we work in a sense of cause and effect, we do not really know whether a class causes an attribute, whether a disease causes a symptom. Keep this in mind. Uh, a, a hint or notation, which you already, I guess, uh, made automatically correct. Um, the combined event is written sometimes with comma, with the end operator, or with the uh, um, intersection operator. Ben, a quick interruption. Somebody noticed a small mistake on slide number 67. Yeah, um, welcome. 60, 67? Yeah. 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 Um, uh, under point number three, where the probabilities are listed, it should be A2 in the condition. That's yeah. just a transcription yeah, error, right. I think. Yeah, you're right. Very good. Great. Did this come from a student or from a TA? Yeah. That came from a student, yeah. Great. From video lesson. Thank you. I'm happy to see this. We, we want to provide excellent material and we are happy to see this. I will repair this point. Not now, but afterwards. <clears throat> Wait, I have to write this down because uh, this is for 67. Okay. We are nearly done. No worries. Okay. <clears throat> Yes, there is a way out with the, with the data problem. And this way out is a quite lazy and crazy way out. We simply claim something which is crucial, but we do this. We say, let's say these or ask or propose that these events here, one outcome for each dimension need not to be observed in a combined fashion. We say they are, they are independent. More precisely, they are conditional independent. They are independent if you look at A. If they are independent, now recall, then we can express this probability here as product of these probabilities here. And this directly relieves our data problem. You see, there are a lot of BJs that are observed. What we need to observe on the left-hand side are events where B1 and B2 and B3 and until BP occur at the same time. Very, very events. But here, if we can say they are independent, the left-hand event probability can be expressed as this product. It's called naive base assumption because it looks so naive, but it is not naive. It's quite smart. There's another thing which is interesting to note. We want to work and distinguish between K classes. Yeah, here. 
encoded as k events a1 until a k. This is a standard base formula here in, in gray. You can click on this here. This is this base formula here, which we cannot apply. And with enough base assumption, we rewrite the numerator here. And what you also see, we remove the denominator because we see that the denominator does not depend on the AIs. And the ranking by looking at those events from the A1 to AK does not change if we replace this probably by a one or two or by some other constant. It means this arc max situation remains the same. It means we don't need the priors here. This is the prior of B. We don't need the probabilities of the combined events. And this formula here gives us the naive base result for the class decision. We can even go one step further, I will hint this shortly, and then go to the, our example. Again, here's everything explained uh, with, uh, with the data problem yeah, that grows exponentially in the number of dimensions and uh, feature values and how we get out. And here's the idea with the argmax term that the ranking works. I've explained everything. You can read this uh, at home at this time. Ah, yeah, there's even more to read, but um, nothing complicated. I want to add two additional aspects to the knife base assumption, namely, if the set of K classes is complete, Recall the eighth example. The two classes, AIDS infection and not AIDS infection, are complete. There's nothing in between. You either are infected or not. And these classes are also mutually exclusive. You cannot be infected and not infected at the same time, even not to a fraction. If these additional properties apply, the first is called closed world assumption you know everything what could have been happened. There is no excuse case for which we know nothing. And the second is called uh, non-overlapping and independence of causes. Then you can compute from the ranking true probabilities because you can use this knowledge to normalize the formula. I've uh, shown this here. The denominator you, you saw, it, which we removed two steps before, can be expressed as a right hand side with a theorem of total probability. And we can here apply the knife base assumption. And we can use this term in the base rule. I have done this here. And then you get not only a ranking, you get even probabilities. Okay, now we are through. I've provided you a construction summary. When you work with base, you will have your set of feature vectors from the setting. You will know your K classes and you have a set of examples. Then the classes correspond to our events A1 to AK. And the feature vectors, there we look at each dimension and each dimension and its value gets its own event. Number of obscene words as seven is an event. The length of the mail is larger than 100 bytes is an event. So probabilities of these events can be computed. To be honest, they can be estimated. You look at D 
and counts occurrences of our classes. This gives us the prior probabilities for the classes. We look at D and the feature vectors and compute the conditional probabilities. That's all. This corresponds to our training that we did before. And the hypothesis selection is done here. I want you that you understand that how this approach fits into the framework that you already learned. We have a training situation and we have a hypothesis selection situation. Point four is if we have the completeness and the independence of the events, then we can even compute probabilities. This goes beyond the applications and the tools that we had before. None of the classifier technology that we learned could give us probabilities. The statistic approach here is a generative approach. It can do this. Again, requirement C is closed world. We know everything. Requirement D is also called single fault. Only one of the classes applies. Yes, then our example. We have solved this example already a few times. With decision trees, linear regression, candidate elimination. And now we will solve this with base, with knowledge base to be precise. From here, we get the prior probabilities. Or the classes. And um, from here, we get the conditional probabilities. And we are now giving the task, here's a feature vector, and we want to find out what is its class, enjoy sport or not. I have encoded the conditional events, the B events as B, J, X, J, which means um, outlook is sunny, means in the first dimension, I have the value X1 is sunny, only to give you a notation to understand this here, to write this down. B, J is X1, denotes the event that feature J has value X, J. Our two classes are yes and no. We compute these priors, the conditionals. We apply in our phase, the simple production. You see, we do not look at the combined events. If you have computed these values, better estimated them. Go to the next page. Here are these values. Altogether, we need 10 probabilities here, which we take from our table. We get this you know, there's a question regarding yeah. the fact that the Bayesian model gives us a probability. Doesn't the logistic regression also give us a probability? Yes, this uh, I also, it is nice that the person, uh, that somebody uh, noted this. Yes, under certain condition, it, it does. Um, and um, it is a bit easier with, um, or more naive made with, um, with logistic regression, because we simply say, uh, these are values between zero and one, and we call them probabilities. And the probabilities, and we, we can stick with this um, because many do this, but these probabilities do not result from the distribution of the data, and uh, like it is here. 
and hence, of course, yes, uh, if you if we call any normalization between zero and one is probability, and this is a personal decision, you can do this. And we also did this because others do this. But this probabilities, uh, what we're talking here about, um, are rooted in the, in the in statistical uh, evaluation of this data set. And this does in fact not happen in logistic regression. But uh, thank you for this discussion. I hope I could clarify this a bit with my answer. It seems so, yeah. OK. Um, we can get a ranking by applying naive base. And um, if we assume that the closed world and the single fault assumption still hold, we can translate this ranking into probabilities. 80% um, for no, 20% for yes. This example concludes and completes our reading for today. And I want to shortly recap what we have seen. We have added our portfolio of machine learning algorithms by a new principle, the so called generative approach. Generative because we generate the distributions or we look at the generated distributions of the data instead of simply drawing a discriminative line, which is done in discriminative approaches. To do so, we interpret each element in our data set as a combined event. And this combined event, or this combined event here, we compute the probability that it happens. And because this combined event is very rare, sunny plus hot plus high plus weak, we apply the naive base assumption by saying, under the class enjoy spot, these probabilities here, these events are independent. Moreover, we are not interested in the priors of B and can compute this naive base, a ranking among the alternative classes. The base formula is not very complicated for you, for you now to derive. You go to the conditional probability. Look at this identity, which comes from the fact that A and B are commutative. This operation is commutative, sorry, here. Yeah probability of A and B is a probability of B and A. Apply the identity for each of these sides. We can then write this identity as follows and resolve to A and a B. And then you observe that cause and effect are expressed in one identity. And base formula relates them to you. We have extended the standard base formula with the situation that we apply it for combined conditional events. And this is the whole instrumentarium that you need to do. You need, of course, to understand what it means, what is total probability, what is event independence, and what is conditional probabilities. But you have now nice illustrations here, and perhaps you already knew this, and I think you are very quick to understand and to apply the NAV base classifier. Thank you for listening. That's all what I want to, wanted to tell you for today. 
and uh, wish you a nice remainder of the week.